Hey, I'm Randy, and you're watching The Cheap Audio Man. Here at The Cheap Audio Man, we help folks find high-value, hi-fi, home theater, and headphone gear. And today, it's Powered Speaker Day. We're talking about the Q Acoustics M20. It's a powered speaker with a DAC and sub-out, so, and a remote. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee. And by the way, we have new coffee mugs if you want to check them out. Grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about the Q Acoustics M20. Today's sponsor is Cheap Audio Man Coffee Mugs. I put together a couple new designs. We have Roctopus, we have a Sith Audio coffee mug, and then a couple of these old old regular ones. So check them out. There's a link. It takes you to all the, the merchandise. But I'm going to be doing some more coffee mugs, some, some fun ones. But Roctopus is cool because on the front, you got Roctopus, and then on the back, it says binge listen and fill your soul with happiness. Q Acoustics M. 20. It is a powered speaker. Comes with a remote control. Has Bluetooth. Has a fully functioning digital analog to conversion interface. They don't call it a DAC as far as like DAC chips, but it'll take an optical. It'll take a USB. Has a sub out. Has RCA's in for any analog device. Looks very similar to the Q Acoustics 3020i as far as size. However, I was told that it is not the same speaker as far as the 3020i being powered. This is a completely different speaker. Kind of, you know, is what it is on the front because the grills don't come off. Just Q acoustics, same size as the 3020i, and same size as this thing, which is an OSD speaker. And it's a blatant ripoff of at least the styling of the Q Acoustics 3020 or 3010s. Doesn't sound doesn't sound like them though. Okay. That review is forthcoming. Anyway, they're about the same size. Qs are a bit bigger. I don't know exactly what size the drivers are. I would assume that there's a one inch soft dome tweeter or ring-ish style tweeter and then a five and a quarter inch woofer. I don't know though. I just went to the website and it didn't say exactly what the drivers are size are doesn't really matter though so why would anybody even need a powered speaker well because it's super convenient you don't have to worry about getting an amplifier you don't have to worry about getting a DAC so what you're getting here fundamentally for six hundred dollars is a pair of speakers an amplifier and a DAC and that amplifier and DAC comes with a remote control and that amplifier and DAC handles Bluetooth, which codex, thanks for asking, Aptex, Aptex HD, which means if you have an Android phone that supports Aptex HD, you're going to get more throughput. More throughput, in theory, means more music. SBC, which is kind of the catch-all, and then AAC. If you're on an Apple device, AAC is the codec that you want to see. That was stupid. So at $600 for powered speakers, one has to consider what they are getting overall. The amplifiers inside here are 65 watts per speaker. Doesn't sound like a lot to some people because you run on down to Best Buy or your local electronics superstore and all their receivers say 120 watts per channel, but that's not, that's not a real power rating. This is a real power rating. There's also a lot of DSP. What does DSP mean? Digital signal processing. What DSP does is optimizes drivers, maybe changes time delays, things like that. Bottom line and the big takeaway about DSP is when used properly, it makes the speaker sound better. And one thing I've come to know about Q Acoustics is they do things right. They're conservative with their specifications as far as like bass roll off and things like that. Their enclosures are built probably better than anybody else in the price range. They really do a good job of enclosure construction which means it reduces resonance and stuff like that. And all that means is makes it not sound as good, makes it not sound good if you have a lot of resonance. On the back, let's take a look at the back. On the back, we have an RCA in. Right next to that, there's a 3.5 millimeter in as well, which means you can take a 3.5 millimeter from a device that has a 3.5 millimeter out, or you can take a RCA out into a 3.5 millimeter. Takeaway here is you have two analog inputs. Right next to that is an optical input. Optical comes from things like TVs, 
CD players, DVD players, game systems, PS3 or something, because I know a lot of you guys love to game. My audience is super young. My audience is filled with gamers. Just kidding. Some of us are in our 40s because we had Atari and NES, Nintendo Entertainment System. USB input, full-size USB input. Speaker outs. So the amplifier in here is running both speakers. And the way that you would connect the other speakers, simply right here. These are the cool binding posts that were on the 3020, the 3010, the 3030Is, which are flat. I don't know if that really gives you anything, except it's cool. So they're flatter, banana clip right here. You can also unscrew it and stick some bare wire in there if you want to. Next to that, this is where it gets kind of cool, all right? There's a left and right toggle switch, which means if you only have one outlet, and you obviously want to put this speaker next to the outlet, and it's on the left side or the right side, you can change it, which is cool. The other thing that you could possibly do if you don't have that switch is flip the RCAs, and then it's going to flip the side. Either way, there's a switch here, which is cool. Okay, this next switch is basically bass mitigation. The theory goes that depending upon where the speaker is placed at in a room to mitigate or accentuate room gain, and room gain is nothing more than putting your speaker against a wall or in a corner and the room is amplifying the signals that are coming from the back of the speaker because signals wrap all the way around. So they're bouncing off the wall and coming back to you. For speakers that don't have a ton of bass, one way that you can get around that is placing them closer to a wall or even placing them in a corner because that's really going to amplify the bass. However, some people don't like that because the bass may be not as accurate. But if you just want to party and you have a speaker that doesn't make a lot of bass, shove it close to the wall. Anyway, getting back to this, what this does is it mitigates how much bass is going through the speaker. Mm or mm. This speaker doesn't have tone controls and I wish they did. I wish they did. This in essence can act like a tone control and I ended up having it all the way up, which reduces the bass, but in doing so, it kind of lets the treble be more on display. And we'll get into it in the sound description, but this is where I ended up with. Another thing that this has is a sub out, which is a good thing if you want bass. With these speakers, I would probably recommend getting a sub, but don't, don't think that you have to go out and get one right away if you're interested in the M20s by Q Acoustics. Powered speakers are getting more and more common, and it's good because it takes a lot of the intimidation out of getting into hi-fi or getting into a soundbar replacement. These, out of the box, could be a soundbar replacement. And once you get the box inside your house, you can have music running through them within about 10 minutes, and three of those minutes are probably gonna be unpacking these out of the box, cutting the tape, taking the styrofoam out, all that good stuff. Very easy to set up. With powered speakers, there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of competition in this price range. You have the Klipsch 5s, you have all the offerings from Edifier. You have all the offerings from Swan. Don't look at me, Swan. Don't look at me, Swan. Adam Sandler. Billy Madison. Most of the major speaker companies have a powered version or a powered option. So there's a lot of choices out there. Good thing about this, sub out. If you look at a lot of the Edifiers, no sub out. Some do, but a lot don't. And with powered speakers, in my experience with them, I was always wanting a sub or at least wanting the option to connect a sub. These are also rear ported. The flare, it flares out on both sides. Interior of the port is cardboard, which very common. These also have uh, rubber feet on the bottom. So they'll protect your speaker stands or bar stools or your TV stand where you're putting them. And I wouldn't be afraid to put these on a TV stand because they are so well built as far as resonances go. I don't think anybody's gonna have a problem getting vibrations and resonances into their TV stand. So how do they sound? Well, initially I hooked up via Bluetooth, hooked up right away, also hooked up USB from my computer and optical from my computer. I did have to fiddle with some of the USB settings to get this to work, but once I did, it was fine. Optical worked right out of the box. Bluetooth worked right out of the box as well. Overall, the sound signature is very linear, which doesn't surprise me. Q Acoustics does a very good job of providing 
a sound signature that is flat, not flat as in boring. If you're just getting into this, a flat or linear speaker response is what most manufacturers shoot for. So having a flat response is actually a good thing. Some speakers that I've heard can have a flat response and can sound, well, flat. Some companies have a flat response and, well, sound not flat. Just having a flat frequency response doesn't mean you're going to get a specific sound out of the speaker. With these, they were very well behaved. For folks that are wanting a ton of bass, I would add a subwoofer. However, initially, if you get these close to the wall, if you mess around with the bass toggle switch on the back, the bass is there. Not only is it there, but the texture, the tone, the accuracy of the bass sound is quite good. I listen to a variety of different songs. Funny enough, these speakers love them some metal. Metallica, Ride the Lightning. Like when it came on, it made me jump. All of Korn's studio recorded stuff is great. Nirvana MTV Unplugged and Alice in Chains MTV Unplugged sounded a bit different. And the difference is in the mid-range. With the internal DAC, some male vocals had the tendency to sound a bit clinical. Some people may call that dry. What I call it is not thin, not digital, not metallic, just a bit dry. And I know that's a strange way and a hard thing to understand, but it didn't have as much body as I have heard through other speakers. However, when we're talking about other speakers, one has to consider the DAC. One has to consider the amplifier. So it's just not the speakers. In this case, it is just the speakers because everything is together. But since there's RCAs in here, I just hooked up different DACs. I started with the Denifreps Aries 2, which is probably my most impressive DAC from a soundstage perspective. And it did increase the soundstage which incidentally, these out of the box, using the internal DAC, using the Bluetooth image spectacularly. They have a very deep soundstage. The travel between speakers is really flawless. And I don't know if that has to do with the DSP or not, but whatever they're doing, it's awesome. When I hooked up the Gishele J2 DAC, that seemed to be a good combination. I felt like I was getting synergy for what I liked. I'm not saying the internal DAC is bad. I'm not. It just seems a bit thin to me, a bit dry in the mid-range. When I added the Gashelli, gave it a bit more body, richened it up a little bit, put a little bit more butter on it. And I don't like butter in the mid-range, but let's be reasonable. That is a $300 DAC. And judging this speaker's DAC against a $300 DAC is just not fair. At $600, you're getting a speaker, you're getting an amp, you're getting a DAC. We need to be reasonable. It makes sense that a $300 DAC is going to make these speakers sound better. Good news is you have that option. The other good news is these don't sound bad at all. So if your budget only allows for these right now, you can add a better DAC later. Top end or treble with these, I felt was very well behaved. I was looking for a little bit more. I wish there was maybe 3 dB more of treble, probably north of 4 to 5K. I just wish the top end was lifted up a bit. But again, that's my personal preference. I like a bit of a U shape. I like to party like you do, maybe. If you're looking for a linear frequency response, treble is going to be just fine. Symbol decay, symbol accuracy, Nina Simone, center man. At the beginning, there's 16th notes. They sounded good. A bit brief. They didn't have the long-term decay that I've come to know. But again, when you hook up a better DAC, some of that comes back. All in all, this speaker, again, very flat, just like the 3020Is. And I like the 3020Is. I think that is a fantastic speaker at the price. Overall, I'm not surprised on how these sound. I'm not surprised at the quality, and I'm not surprised on the ease of use because Q Acoustics has somewhat of a reputation for me, because I've reviewed a fair number of their products at this point, of being a very good company. They cross their T's, they dot their I's. I haven't seen a product come out of Q Acoustics that hasn't been well done. Another thing about these speakers that they are not fatiguing. Some powered speakers that I've had 
one which recently, and that that's going to get eviscerated in the review. Some powered speakers have a tendency to be quite shouty in the mid-range. Not so with these. So you can crank these up and they're not going to be in your face chewing on your nose or anything, which can be unpleasant. Only thing I wish these had were tone controls. That's it. I get it. The frequency response is solid, but I think people, especially at this price range, should be given an option because most of the competition out there does have tone controls. What would be even cooler is if there could be an app. Now I know with these, it's only Bluetooth. So getting an app in here may not be feasible. What would also be cool is if there's different, I know there's some power speakers that actually have a USB input and one can load different EQ curves. However, this thing's gonna check the box for most people. While I wish it did have tone controls, while I wish it did have a few different EQ settings or at least the option to upload some EQ settings, I still think this thing sounds great. It's not gonna offend anybody. And for most people, it will be a brilliant first system or second system, a brilliant soundbar replacement. Get a subwoofer on here, plug the ports. You can kind of tailor the sound a bit to your liking. All in all, I'm very impressed. $600 is a lot, but one has to consider you're getting a very good pair of speakers from a very good speaker manufacturer. You're getting an amplifier that's tailored to the speaker, and you're getting a DAC, and you're getting Bluetooth, and you're getting a remote control. There's other options out there, but this is a safe bet and a safe place to put your money. If you're just getting into the hobby and you wanna take all of the intimidation off the table as far as system matching. It does get better with a better DAC. Soundstage and imaging is flawless at this price point. Very well done, and I'm sure it has to do with the DSP going on there. Whatever they're doing, sounds great. Good job, Q Acoustics. So if you wanna support the channel, you can buy a coffee mug. You can sign up for Amazon Music. Uh, there's a link in the description. Click on the link, sign up. You get a bunch of months for free or maybe some Disney Plus for free. You can use the affiliate link that'll be in the description. You can also sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap audio. And every Sunday night we have patron only Zooms. We also have a patron only Facebook group. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu unless you're using this as a soundbar. Binge listen through your new Q Acoustics M20s powered speakers and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy, I'm the Cheap Audio Man. <laughs>